Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of the Bundesliga career mode. This is episode number 64 and today it's the final episode of season 3 with Hamburg and it is the big one. The Champions League final against Manchester United. Now of course a couple episodes ago we won our first ever trophy by drawing against Schalke on the final day of the Bundesliga to win the league title for our first trophy since I took over. Then in the last episode directly a week after in game time we beat Stuttgart by three goals to nil in the German Cup final to complete a domestic double. But today, we go for the grand prize. We go for the sweep. We try and win the magic treble against Manchester United in the Champions League final. Now, Hamburg have only ever won a Champions League once in their entire history. Manchester United's last Champions League came 10 years ago in the game against Chelsea in Moscow back in 2008. So today, this is the big one. Who is going to come out on top? Manchester United or Hamburg in the Champions League final. Now before the game you saw some youth players there wanting to terminate their contracts so I gave them new deals and also this game was intentionally supposed to be, uh, initially I should say, supposed to be a live Q&A but instead I decided to do a live highlights game for it just because some people don't like the live Q&As because they're a bit too long so I'm going to save the Q&A for a later date and instead do a live highlights game for this one. But either way it's Manchester United against Hamburg, Hamburg against Manchester United, Germany against England, Docks versus Louis Van Hal, and it is the big one. Now, we'll be calling this season a successful one, whether we win the trophy or not, but I think it'll be a really fitting end to season three to have gone a couple years with no trophies and then to win all three in season three, winning the Magic Treble, that would be a great achievement. So, both sides evenly matched. It's going to be a great game here at the Stadio Olimpico. Hamburg versus Manchester United in the Champions League final. Can we come through and deliver the clean sweep, win the Magic Treble? Let's find out. It's going to be a great game, but come on, Hamburg. So here we go then, Champions League final between Manchester United and Hamburg here at the Stadio Olimpico. Honestly, I don't know what team would be considered favourites for this one because we don't know how many United have been getting on in their league. But when you compare the teams together, they're very evenly matched. Both sides have a fantastic goalkeeper, a really good striker, solid fullbacks, competent centre backs, very good central midfielders and wingers as well. But we could be through for the first chance of the game here with Correa onside, one on with Neuer. Correa straight at Neuer, and it's saved by the goalkeeper. That was our first chance of the game straight away. United gave it away. Brands crossed the centre, and Neuer claims it. And I took the shot on a bit too early with Correa there. And Neuer made the save. It wasn't the most accurate of strikes by Correa. Pretty much straight down the throat of Neuer. And that was a great chance there, which I just messed up. But either way, a very good sign early on. And that was a chance for Manchester United. Rooney crossed the centre, misses everyone, and goes behind for a cold kick. So a chance for both sides in the first five minutes, still goalless. But this could be one hell of a final. I don't know what side's better. I've got no idea what side is stronger. But I know it's going to be a very fun game. Come on, Hamburg. Matter through towards his teammate and Masuaku is there and now a chance on the break here. Holtby through towards Correa. Correa through the middle. Finds Maya down left hand side. Across comes Chris Smalling. Can Maya beat him with a skill? I think he can. I think he can. I think he can. He's done so. Maya cross to the far post. Neuer just about got there. And Manchester United should get the danger clear with Schweinsteiger and Luke Shaw. And they'll play it back towards Neuer and they should be totally fine. So this game started off a frenetic pace. Since then it's calmed down a little bit, which is obviously a good thing because the players need to conserve their energy for the rest of the game. But I want to see some more chances as Rooney goes down his left-hand side, but preferably for us. But here's Rooney on the ball, trying to get inside. Still Rooney, still Rooney, still Rooney on the ball. How has he kept hold of this ball despite the pressure of the Hoff and Saul? Back towards Luke Shaw. Shaw now on the ball and United might go all the way back here. But instead Shaw turns his man. They want to cross the ball into the centre here. But here's Luke Shaw, he has space to shoot. Valente makes to save and then punches away to rebound two and Mata will dribble the ball out of play for a throw to Hamburg and a good save by Valente and a good recovery punch as well sees the score remain at nil nil so 32 minutes in neither side has looked stronger than the other one really but goalless, anything can happen. I think the first goal of the game is going to be crucial because if one team gets it before the break, we could see them possibly run away if they can keep on getting the chances. And speaking of which, his career inside the area and a great save by Manuel Neuer as he turns it behind for a corner. So both goalkeepers making impressive saves and it is still nil-nil with 10 minutes to go. 
before the half time mark. Will one of these sides take the advantage in the first 45 minutes or will we still be deadlocked at 0-0 as we go into the dressing room? Shaw cuts inside but Sane read it and now a chance on the break here of Gerhardt through towards Meyer, through towards Correa. Chris Moore is going to struggle to keep up here. Angel Correa inside to shoot and once again Neuer makes another great save at his near post. And I think I might have taken the shot on a little bit too early, just like the first chance we had as Neuer turns behind for a corner. It was on uh, Correa's weaker left foot and the German goalkeeper made an impressive save once again. He's had a very good half to turn it behind for a corner. So still nil-nil. Meyer through towards Saul and the centre-back will play it long towards Danny Carvajal. He's got Sane with him, but he'll find Gerhardt instead through towards Sane. Sane tries to take it round Luke Shaw and he's done so. Leroy Sane did really well there and the former Schalke man's inside crosses straight to Manuel Neuer who will get the ball clear. So we've been inside a couple of times against United. Their defence isn't looking that strong, but we can't find the opening goal of the game as Meyer goes for goal and shoots it just wide of the post. And that's going to be a booking for Matter, I think it was. So five minutes after the break, Schneider even. So five minutes after the break, still nil-nil. We get the first chance the second half, though. Very encouraging. And we've got to take one of these opportunities, though. It's still nil-nil. Hummels to Bruno Fernandes, just off the bench for United, and Schneiderlin finds Memphis, back towards the Frenchman, and the former Southampton midfielder finds Rooney, now towards Schweinsteiger, and the Hoff is there, and as ever, so good at making the tackle, the important interception, and starting off a break here, Gerhardt through towards Angel Correa, man out wide is Julian Brandt, helps it on to him, Julian Brandt down left-hand side, holds it up, trying to play it back towards Correa, and goes down, and the referee's given a penalty in the 57th minute, and Chris Morling is the guilty party, he's also got a booking as well and I'll have to see that back on the replay there I think the referee called it right because Brandt stopped the ball took it round Smalling and then was taken down but I'm not sure whether Smalling won the ball or not let's have a look this is not the best angle yeah, I don't think that's... Uh, I mean, that's hard. I might have to watch that on instant replay back. But I don't think Smalling got any touch of the ball at all. It was a great move by Julian Brandt. And the referee gives a penalty. And Cesar Valente will stand up and take it against Manuel Neuer. How about this? On the stroke of the hour mark, Valente's only missed one penalty in his career. Can he score here? It's Cesar. I'm going to the top right. Valente puts it into the back of the net and makes it 1-0 to Hamburg and we draw first blood just past the hour mark. Cesar Valente scoring in the Champions League final and it's 1-0 to Hamburg. We've been the better side. We've looked stronger. We won the penalty and Cesar Valente dispatches it with a brilliant strike and Manuel Neuer is rooted to the spot. Even if he dies, he's getting nowhere near that one. That's a brilliant penalty by Valente right into the side of the net, just inside the post. And that's a lovely shot right there. Cesar Valente opens the scoring in the Champions League final. How about that? That's his fourth goal in the competition. It's United nil, Hamburg won. We could be on our way to the magic treble. Get in. And I just thought I'd show you this as well. This is the penalty decision where Julian Brown was taken down by Chris Smalling. It's very, very interesting and it can be seen as very debatable. Chris Smalling goes to ground here really early. Brandt stops the ball and Smalling gets a slight touch of the ball with the trailing left leg, but then takes down Julian Brandt as he's about to get up and Brandt is going to go down left-hand side and keep holding that ball. Now, when Smalling dives in here, this is where the contact is made, right here with the left leg of Chris Smalling. It's the, uh, the left knee, I think it is. Yeah, right there, which makes slight contact with the ball, but he gets an awful lot of Julian Brandt and actually locks his legs in between Brandt's left leg and that's what makes the contact right there with Julian Brandt and that's why he hits the deck. So it's an interesting decision because it's not a slide tackle which was clean if you will the motion is quite odd because when he comes in he misses the ball completely and takes down Julian Brandt you can see there he's sort of waving it around a little bit as he gets caught in between Julian Brandt's legs and then he takes him down afterwards so it's a very interesting decision because the contact he makes with the ball is before he takes down Brandt but it's way before he takes down Julian Brandt it's almost like there's two tackles in one here and that's the second one which takes down Brandt so a question for you guys today because this could determine the outcome of the game was this a 
penalty? Did the referee call it right? Or did Julian Brandt initiate contact here and try and buy a penalty? Let me know in the comment section down below, how do you see this incident? Was it a penalty? Did the referee get it right? Or our Manchester United harshly done by here? If I'm being honest, I know I might be a little bit biased here, but I think it's a certain penalty due to the fact that Brandt's legs get locked in between Chris Smalling's and then he takes him down here. But I can see why some people would say it's not a penalty and Brandt went looking for it. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think? This could determine the game. So was it a penalty? Did the referee call it right? Or have we got away with one? Let me know in the comment section down below and tell me what you think. So Darmian on the ball for Manchester United, 22 minutes to go, we still lead by a goal to nil through that Valente penalty as Schweinsteiger launches the ball long, Brandt gets there, Hoffman also clears it too and now Holtby to Gerhardt and a chance on the break here, Meyer through the top towards Correa who could be onto this ball here, takes it round Hummels, oh brilliant stuff from Correa, brilliant stuff from Correa and then once again I took this shot on way too early, I've been doing that all game long with Angel Correa and it goes harmlessly wide in the post, I just thought Shaw might have covered back due to his pace and got a tackle in so Correa puts it wide once again but here is the substitute Fellaini off the bench for United oh what a ball by Fellaini what a ball by Fellaini and Wayne Rooney is equalized for Manchester United just a minute after I said they need to get back in the game and Wayne Rooney has put United back on level terms and talk about instant impact Maran Fellaini won the ball here after Rooney's knocked down and what a free ball to split the defense and Wayne Rooney rifles it in and makes it 1-1 in the final Valente came out to meet him, but it's a brilliant strike by the weaker left foot of Wayne Rooney into the back of the net. A superb strike, and Manchester United are back on level terms. So 1 1, and Rooney has got the equalising goal for Manchester United. What a shame. Our lead lasts for just 11 minutes. We were plain sailing, we were fine, and Fellaini comes off the bench to change the game, equalise for the English team, and United are back on level terms. 1-1 one, one, Rooney with a goal. Here's Carvajal through towards Correa. Down the right hand side. Correa inside the area. What a tackle by Matt Tummels. And the referee's given a penalty, has he? Or is that a corner? No. <laughs> That was me thinking the referee's getting a penalty. That was definitely not a penalty. I'm not being biased there. That was definitely not a penalty. But in the end, the referee did call that right. It's just a great challenge by Hummels. And it goes behind for a corner. So the referee's not going to give us two in the same game. And certainly not that one. But here's Correa inside. Goes for goal. Blocked and follows on from the deflected shot. And Fellaini off the bench gets the ball clear. So 1-1. This final is back on level terms. And with 15 minutes to go, it could go either way. Or we could be going into extra time. What a fantastic game this has been. Rashford here down the right hand side for United and five minutes of stoppage time here have almost been played and United could win it late on in injury time. Marcus Rashford crossed to the far post. Rooney heads it off target and puts it behind for a goal kick and Wayne Rooney scored the equaliser was found at the far post and that should have been the game in stoppage time. He couldn't head the ball on target, puts it over and wide really, didn't make a great connection with the cross and a huge let off for Hamburg as United almost stole the game in stoppage time. And still they're coming forward. Rashford to Smalling. Furthest forward here for United. Chris Smalling tries to cross. Maswaku blocks it. Hoffman gets it behind for a corner. This is crazy. We've gone from being in complete control to hanging on for our lives here. Final chance of the game. Corner for United. Are they going to win it and break our hearts? Memphis cross to the centre. Out comes Valente. Punches it clear. I think with the help of Torres Gomez. Fernandez's ball towards Shaw. Fellaini blocked by Holtby. Smalling shot. Wide of the post. And that will do it. Final score at the Stadio Olimpico, Manchester United won, Hamburg won, and what an interesting game. For a long time, we were in control. We then took the lead for a Valente penalty after Brandt was taken down. But at, uh, 11 minutes after that, Wayne Rooney equalised as I'm losing my breath. And United, for the final 20 minutes, dominated and almost got themselves in front for the first time to win the game late on. But the game did finish 1-1, as you could see. I thought he did play better over the course of 90 minutes, but United ended the game stronger. So they'll be looking stronger going into extra time but it's anyone's to play for 30 minutes to go who is going to win this game or will it go down to a penalty shootout my Champions League finals rarely go down to penalty shootouts these days 
Who is going to come out on top in the extra time period? Let's find out. We've got one more change to make. I don't know who to take off, though. I can't take off Lewis Holt with the skipper. Mastrag is getting tired, so is Gerhardt. Possibly Sonny down the right-hand side. I don't want to take off Yannick Gerhardt, though, because then we're going to lose some defensive cover. Oh, this is a really difficult choice here. Who do I bring off? Who do I bring on? Not entirely sure. I'll leave for the time being, but here we go. Going into extra time. We're deadlocked at 1-1. Who is going to take home the Champions League trophy? Don't go anywhere, 30 minutes to go. It's balanced on the knife edge, it could go either way. But come on, Hamburg. Sure to Fellaini, through towards Darmian. Hope he blocks the ball, but it'll come towards Chris Morning, who's staying forward for these attacks. Crazy. And now Fellaini, through towards Rashford, down the right-hand side. Rashford crossed to the centre. Carver Howe's got to get there. Rooney hits the post, and Carver Howe gets it clear. Wayne Rooney hits the post, and we escape with Carver Howe getting it clear. And now Torres Gomez on the ball, takes it around his man. Oh, I put the... No! I flicked the stick just a little bit too much, and he ran straight to Neuer. Oh my goodness, Rooney hitting the post. He almost won the game in injury time with his header going off target, and then that one hits the woodwork, and we are still tied at 1-1. My word, what a game this has been. United have turned up late on, and are going in search of the goal to win the game here, but Luan to Torres Gomez, back towards Luan, inside to win the game. Luan, surely, what a save by Neuer Damian. Surely gets it clear, no, Neuer trips him up, and Torres Gomez is tackled, now Darmian clear. This is madness, utter madness. It's still 1-1. What's going on? It's still level. I'm losing my breath. This is crazy. End-to-end -end stuff. Rashford played down the right hand side. Maswaku can't give up. Crosses the centre. Valente with an unbelievable bionic arm clearance. Memphis picks it up for United. This is mad. I'm going to start sweating at any moment now. Luke Shaw into Memphis on the ball. And everyone just take a deep breath. I need the ball to go out of play. This is crazy. Easy Fellaini inside to Memphis, back towards Rooney, drills it in, Mata's touch taken down, penalty to Manchester United, and Juan Mata has won a penalty off Nicholas Saul, and the referee has awarded a spot kick, and I mean Mata comes forward, we barely see a replay for it, as Maswak is getting subbed off for Durham, for goodness sake, now I don't want to make the change if United score here. Oh my goodness, Manchester United win a penalty. I'm going to have to show it on the instant replay once again, just like our penalty. Because again, I think it might have been debatable. Matter went through the strike, it didn't make connection. Whether he was pushed by Saul, not entirely sure. But it's a penalty to Manchester United. And a chance for them to take the lead in extra time. My word, what a game this has been as Durham comes on. Matter wins the spot kick. Penalty to United, Wayne Rooney hit the post a few minutes ago and now has the chance to give United the lead for the first time in the game. He missed the chance in stoppage time. Can he give them the lead here? It's going to be Wayne Rooney who stands up and takes it, stutters and scores as well and makes it 2-1 to Manchester United and on the stroke of half-time in extra time, Wayne Rooney has given United the lead. Valente tried to put him off but he didn't work. He went straight down the middle after the stutter and Wayne Rooney gives Manchester United the lead in stoppage time in the first half of extra time it's into the roof of the net straight down the middle well a little bit to the right but either way he gets it in that's the most important thing and Wayne Rooney has given United the lead he scored their equaliser he scored from the spot to give them the lead it's 2-1 United and unfortunately now half time gets blown and we're 15 minutes away from throwing it away. How quickly your mood can change. Manchester United 2, Hamburg 1. We've had chances, we've had more of them, but United have the lead. 15 minutes to go. I think the trophy could be going to United. And so here is the Manchester United penalty decision. And Mata receives the ball here just inside the area, takes a touch and goes to shoot. And if you can see here, he sort of miskicks the ball and goes to ground. But I don't think Nicholas Saul touches him at all. There's certainly no contact between the legs of the players, none at all whatsoever. It's the arms of Nicholas Saul that sort of come across here. Is there a push in the back of Mata after he's released the ball? Well, the right arm doesn't touch Mata at all. There's no contact with the right arm of Saul on Mata whatsoever. If you look here, this is the best way of looking at it, you don't see any contact whatsoever. There is no contact with Saul on Mata with the right arm. And with the left arm to push Mata, I don't think he makes contact either. Possibly right here when he comes across. But by that stage, Mata's already about to hit the deck. 
the right thumb, if you will, on Mata's left arm might come through there by the shoulder area, right there, there we go, you can see there might be slight contact, in fact there is contact with Saul on Mata there with the right thumb, uh, sorry, the left thumb even with Saul on Mata's left shoulder, but is that enough to bring Mata down? And by that point, Mata's already basically on the floor. So a question here, is this a penalty? Did the referee call it right? Is the left thumb of Nicholas Saul on Matt's left shoulder enough to award a penalty whilst he's already falling down anyway? I'm not entirely sure. So a question for you guys, is this a penalty or has Matt bought it? Let me know in the comment section down below. I need you guys to let me know by both penalty decisions, which one was a penalty? Were they both penalties? Were neither penalties? Let me know in the comment section down below. How did the referee call both of these incidents? Penalties, no penalties, one penalty, one not a penalty. Let me know in the comment section down below and tell me what you think about these decisions. Very interesting to say the least. Two penalties given in the final. Not entirely sure about either of them. Let me know in the comment section down below. How would you guys have called these decisions? 11 minutes to go, corner to Hamburg, Holtby takes it, finds Correa on the edge of the area, sets himself, has room to shoot, and Neuer makes the save, and that should go behind for another corner, no, because the Hoff beat Fellaini to the ball, played it back towards Carvajal, he'll whip it into the centre, looks for Torres Gomez, off the post from Torres Gomez, and Smalling gets it away, MTG wins the header, but can only hit the post, Saul to Sané, and the shot is deflected by the Hoff and goes behind for a goal kick. What a game. MTG hitting the post, and still United are in front. Come on, Hamburg, eight minutes to go. We can find the equaliser, come on. So Manchester United are seconds away from winning their first Champions League trophy in 10 years. Their last one exactly 10 years ago in the game, 2008, Moscow. John Terry's infamous slip, Van der Sar's save on Nicolas Anelka. They're seconds away from winning it again here. Holtby towards Gerhardt, we gotta launch it long. Gerhardt in towards Correa, flicked on. Hummels doesn't deal with this. Hoffman against Hummels in the air, Fellaini gets back to clear it, so does Fernandez. come on referee, give us one more chance, Saul through towards Luan, down the left hand side, Luan on the ball, tries to take it around Mata, our final chance here, Luan with the Berber spin, Mata tackles, clears, can we get one final chance, Rooney heads it away, Gerhardt's got to launch it long into the area, it's not the best of balls, Luan will try and win this, flicks it on, headed away by Hummels, Fellaini nods it down, Hummels clears, is that going to be that, can we get one more chance, it's Carver Howell who can't get it long, and that is that final score at the Stadio Olimpico, Manchester United 2, Hamburg 1, and they've come from behind through two goals from Wayne Rooney to claim their first Champions League trophy in a decade. Oh no, we have failed in the final and we haven't completed the treble. And I feel like I've only got myself to blame for it. We had so many chances. We had so many opportunities. We hit the post in extra time. We had so many great chances. But we're not going to complete the magic treble. And Manchester United are Champions League winners. And Marouane Fellaini is going to lift the trophy for the Red Devils. The Belgian will get his hands on silver. I'm surprised it's not Rooney or Chris Smalling, but instead Marouane Fellaini, the Afro, is going to lift the trophy. And Manchester United are Champions League winners once again. Their last win 10 years ago in Moscow. Their last final at Wembley uh, seven years ago in 2011. Barcelona beat them 3-1 if I remember correctly. But Manchester United Champions League winners and the devastation is real because we had chances, we had so many opportunities but this was a game where simply I did not do enough to take advantage of all the times we got inside and Manchester United, oh this is a sickening in sight, Manchester United are Champions League winners and I'm absolutely furious myself because they're a great team, they're a fantastic side and again they've got a really really strong team, it's, uh, it's a team indeed but I really feel as though with all the chances we created in this game, we should have taken more than one. And that was a penalty through Valente. And Manchester United have gone on to ruin our dreams of the Magic Treble. They've won the Champions League. Fellaini's lifted it aloft. And congratulations to the English team, Manchester United, who beat us in the Champions League final. So you'll see the stats right here. We had 16 shots, double what United took, and nine on target compared to United's eight and seven. 
We were balanced in possession, relatively balanced in pass accuracy. We didn't play badly, and I feel as though on another day we could have got the win, but I only have myself to blame for not taking our chances. And you look at the shot accuracy, that tells the story for me. United were clinical, and we simply weren't. So United win the game, an interesting game, two crucial penalty decisions. Again, what do you guys think about them? Let me know in the comment section down below. You've seen the replays. What do you think? Were they penalties or were they not? Man match to me, possibly Neuer for quite a few big saves. Um, for them to make some big saves himself as well to keep us in the game. But I think for me, it has to go to Wayne Rooney. He had the chances. He scored both of their goals, one from the spot and one in the second half as well. Sorry, an extra time as well from the... Um, no, sorry. He scored in, for, in the, uh, the, 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 the full 90 minutes. So to get them back on their terms, a great finish. And also scored a penalty as well. He also hit the post as well, Wayne Rooney. So for me, man of the match is Wayne Rooney for those two goals. And he helped United win the game. And Mario Fellaini as well deserves special credit. He got to lift the trophy. He came off the bench and completely changed things for United. He really did. But either way, Rooney man the match. United Champions League winners. We have not won the trophy. We are not European winners. And we haven't won the treble. And I'm absolutely gutted because we had the lead. We had the lead just past the hour mark. And I didn't kill the game off. Of all the chance we had, I didn't kill the game off. And I'm made to pay for it for my poor mistake so I take full responsibility for not winning this game and Manchester United have ruined our dreams of the treble so United Champions League winners Hamburg will have to settle for the domestic double it's still a great season we're still calling this season a success getting to the Champions League final the first we've ever been in that competition and also winning a domestic double but Manchester United crown Champions League winners and we just can't Oh my god, I, I, don't know how to, I don't know how to explain how I'm feeling, like, it's been a great season, but it's a sad ending, it's been a great, you can't, you can't discredit how great the season's been, we've done better than ever before, we've come closer than ever before to winning this European trophy, but it's still a really sad ending, especially because we had the lead in this final, and in extra time we had chances as well, so, I'm, I'm proud of our efforts this season, I'm very proud of them indeed, but it's still a very, very sad ending. So as you get through to June, this will be the final day of today's episode. What I'm going to do is show you the uh, the scout reports, the useful monthly report, the squad report, the stats as well. And that will do it for the final episode of the season before we go into the World Cup, which will be starting either tomorrow or later on today, depending on how quickly I can get the footage recorded. So either way, you'll see the final stats of the players here in what was a very successful third season with Hamburg, but in the end it ends in tears as we don't win the Champions League and it is won by Manchester United. Oh my word, just sickening really. But again, to assess the season as a whole, what I'll say right now is that despite the very sad ending, you have to realise that what we've done this year is better than ever before. We were fantastic for the most part. This guy looks quite good. Um, we were fantastic for the most part. You know, we only lost three games all season long, if I remember correctly, and one of those was the Champions League final. So I think you have to, you know, give us credit for that alone, for being very, very good in all three competitions, not just two or three or even just one, but in all three competitions, we were very, very strong in the league, winning the league, of course. But again, you know, drawing so many games wasn't great to see. Our second half of the season was very poor, but we still won the Bundesliga title. Delighted with that. With the German Cup, we weren't planning to win it at all. We didn't really care about it at all, but we still managed to come through and win it, beating Stuttgart 3-0 in the final. So that was good. And the Champions League as well. You know, we came for our group. We, we knocked Real Madrid out. We topped our group. That was better than last year. We finished runners-up. And we also uh, knocked out Arsenal, despite the fact that we were trailing from the first leg. Uh, sorry, so yeah, we lost four games in total this season. We were trailing the first leg in around 16 stage. So that was quite impressive. Our massive win against Benfica, 5-0. That was amazing. You know, we, you know, beating Barcelona again over two legs, you have to realise this was a great season. And despite the sad ending, I'm still extremely proud and immensely happy with what we did this year. It's just a shame that we don't win the treble and at the final stage, we bottle it. And we say, I, I say we bottled it, I mean I bottled it. But either way, you can see the stats of the players right here. I think every single player this season played very well. I'm, I'm impressed with everyone. Even Nicholas Saul, who had a struggling start, ended up doing quite well for us this season. And again, that penalty decision, I don't really think I can blame him for it because he barely made contact with uh, Matter. But either way, it was, a, it was a good season. Our signings did quite well. I think all the new players did quite well for us. 
us this year. I think Marco Torres Gomez deserves a lot of credit as well. Came in in January, was meant to be nothing other than a squad player, but did quite well for us. Angel Correa, not as good as last season, but still very impressive. 30 goals in 47 games. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with how our players did this season. And I'm very happy with what we did as well. Uh, I'll show you the, uh, the new youth players coming to the first team as well. This guy looks like a good third choice goalkeeper. Um... So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm relatively happy with the players' development this season, season as well. Still a little bit sad by the fact that Hoffman just refuses to grow despite being a rock at the back. But either way, it's, it, it's been a successful season. But there's, 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 there's proof that we still have more to do here with Hamburg. You know, I asked you guys on the final day of the Bundesliga season, when should, when should I be looking to end this season? Uh, sorry, end this series. And the truth of the matter is, I don't think we can end it after this season because there's still work to be done. We're not good enough to win the Champions League at, uh, at the moment. As you can see, we, we lost the final. So there's still work to be done. I want to win the Champions League with Hamburg before we call it a night with this project. And I think there's still work to be done. So this is one of the other youth players. Uh, Maurice Trapp looks quite good as well. He's showing a great potential tag. Uh, Mirko Ox as well, 61 overall. Also showing great potential. Oh, fi oh yes, yes, yes. Five-star skills. Hello. Welcome to my club. Um, sorry, I love five-star skillers, especially on youth players. But um, yeah, we, we still got work to do. We still got work to do. And it's back to the drawing board for our fourth season. So we'll have to make improvements to the team as well. Where we look to buy a new position, possibly the left midfield role take out Julian Brandt and bring in a new left winger, possibly someone with pace and skill. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, either way, there's still work to be done. We've got a lot of youth talent in this Hamburg side though now, liking the looks of uh, France and Grala goalkeepers. Ox, of course, five-star skiller just coming in. Morris Trapp as well. Uh, Yannick Strobel, of course, can't forget about him. Torres Gomez in there as well. So yeah, it's um, th th there's more work to be done with Hamburg. There's more work to be done. It's a sad ending to the season, but there's more work to be done. And we just have to go again next year as well. But that is going to be today's episode of the Bundesliga career mode, guys. The next episode will be the start of the World Cup with Brazil. We have Switzerland, Romania and South Africa in our group. You'll see that uh, to begin in the next episode. Look forward to that. Uh, once again, there'll be no Hamburg stuff in those episodes whatsoever. So if you're not interested in stuff with Brazil, whenever you see the Brazil thumbnail in your sub box, just leave it. Don't worry about it. Don't watch it. You won't miss anything from the Hamburg's, uh, Hamburg side of the story you'll miss nothing whatsoever I'll leave all of the footage until the new season starts and you'll see the return with the new Hamburg thumbnail so don't worry about it at all if you're not interested in the Brazil stuff just completely ignore it you won't miss a single thing I'll keep it all separate for you and um, and there you go but either way the next episode will be the start of the World Cup with Brazil and once that's over we'll begin our fourth season with Hamburg we end on a sad note, but if nothing else, that'll give us a chip on our shoulder going into the new season. We'll look to improve our team. We'll see our initial budgets. We'll make some signings in the next episode with Hamburg, and we'll see what we do. So thanks for watching the episode regardless. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode, despite the sad ending, please do leave a like. Likes are much appreciated, and of course, they really help the channel grow as well. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. Enjoy the FA Cup final later on tonight, and I'll see you for the next episode of the Bundesliga Career Mode very soon.